Hey crafty peeps. Okay, so today's video is sponsored by Hippo. And they sent me some sublimination products. I'm going to share them with you. And you're going to be stunned at how easy sublimation is. If you don't know what sublimation is, it is a way to get ink onto fabrics. So it's kind of like it infuses with the fabric instead of like vinyl that's you know you have to stick on and kind of is raised so i want to take you along the journey of setting it up as well as showing you how i do things for the first time ever i want you to see how easy it is for your very first time i filmed everything i did as the first time so i didn't practice ahead of time any of that i wanted to show you my journey show you how easy it is and how amazing it is really all you need is the as a printer that has ink tanks and some sort of heat um, to set the image well i shouldn't say that you also you need um the actual sublimation paper but that's super easy it just goes into your printer just like any computer printer paper um, photo paper um and it it's very 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 cost effective while sublimation would be fun just to have you could make some serious money also doing some sublimation on the side. I feel like a lot of us crafters and moms, we have side hustles. This is like really going to be great. Okay, so to begin with, you're going to take out your Epson printer and before you set it up, before you use these inks that come with the Epson, you are going to toss them aside. You don't need them. You're going to instead use this ink here that is sublimation ink. So you have to use sublimation ink. You cannot use regular printer ink. But it will be just the same um, way to put the ink in as well as print. Everything like that will be the same. Now, I put on a glove because I thought this might get messy. It does not. You don't necessarily need the glove. It has a little valve. Um, so you could actually even turn it upside down and nothing's going to come out. Don't do that, but you could. And once you press it down, that's what opens it up and the ink can just start pouring into um, the containers there. So you see there's a black and then you've got your three um, colors, which I think they call cayenne, magenta, and CMY, I can't remember. <laughs> Yellow, magenta, cobalt, I don't know, something like that. All right, and so you can see how I filled up the tank right there. And I'm going to go ahead and fill up the other three tanks. And you can see that it was super easy to do. Once the tank is full, I can now go to my computer and I can print anything that I want that I would normally print on a printer and that will become my sublimation design. Now you do want to use sublimation paper, um, that's a must as well. So you're going to use sublimation ink and sublimation paper. Also, when you're printing, you want to make sure that you are doing it on highest quality. And you also want to make sure that if you have words, that you have mirrored those because this will go face down. So you want to make sure your words are mirrored. Now, I just went in on Canva. I typed in spring watercolor images, and this is one of the things that came up, and I thought it was super cute. I'm going to use this heat press. You do not have to have a heat press. You can use like your Cricut heat press or an iron. Um, but in this case, I am using this heat press here. And so I grabbed one of these, um, their car chamois from Dollar Tree. I wanted to practice on some lower end items so that if I messed up, it wouldn't be a huge deal. You are watching me do this for the very first time, which I think helps you see how simple it really is. Um, I was very intimidated and then I thought how silly of me because it really was so easy. 
And so I'm setting my heat press at 380 degrees and I'm going to press it for 50 seconds. Now there is a heat guide on the back of the sublimation paper that will help you understand. Um, I do want to go back here and talk about the chamois that I chose. Your item needs to be polyester. That is what's going to take to the sublimation. So make sure you read the label of your fabrics and that they are polyester. Okay, all you do is just peel it up, simple as that, and now your image is in the fabric. It is gorgeous. You can see here there's nothing to peel up. There's nothing to raise the image like if you were to use vinyl. That is it. It's just a gorgeous and you saw how bright the image was. The next item I decided to try is one of these pot holders also from Dollar Tree. I thought this was a pretty spring color. I again got this image from Canva and I it just printed it out. The reason I kind of tore it up like that is because I wanted to be able to tell where the image was. Now I also, to keep it in place, you can use some heat uh, resistant tape. So you have to make sure you're using this kind of tape. A regular tape will melt. So you want to use this heat resistant tape. Again, I will have all the supplies linked in the description. Once you get that uh, tape down, you'll put it in your press again for the same time as I did on the blanket, which was 380 degrees for 50 seconds. I wanted to make a matching towel and so I'm going to use the same design and add it to this towel. And what I like is how vibrant the colors are. Now you need to understand that whatever color you're doing it on is going to come through. It's kind of almost like transparent. So if you want it brighter and clearer, you're going to want a white surface. If you use a colored surface, it is not going to be quite as bright. The next item I want to try out was this zippered pouch also from Dollar Tree. Um, the top part kind of has that canvasy feel and then it's a little suede feel at the bottom. Now I did want to make sure that I put a piece of parchment paper down in um, side because the um, it did have kind of a plasticky feel inside and I didn't want that to melt. And so also you've got your um, zipper there this one so you want to make sure you don't get that too hot or touch it because it will be very hot and again this is a little gnome design from canva that i'm going to place on to this um little pouch bag i did print it out bigger too and i flipped it over and i did the bigger um one on the other side so you can see it both ways but this would be super easy to personalize or i mean there's just endless options that you could do this would be a great item to sell um, that you could personalize for events so it, yeah i just really love how it turned out and again this has a little bit of a cream color to the fabric so it won't be quite as vibrant if it had been white but look at how cute these little gnomes came out um, on this pouch I also printed it on to another one of the little car shams as well. Okay, so now if you are using a heat press like this, um, it comes with a couple attachments. One is a one for hats, one for um, like tumblers and mugs and then one for plates and so I am going to try out the hat press so I did pick up a hat from Dollar Tree actually I think this hat is from the 99 cent store um, so I'm going to show you how easy it is just to unscrew two screws here and it pops off this top press um, 
it was a little screwed on tight on one side but anyhow once you um don't lose your screws you're gonna need those so you just pop off this plate here oh and don't forget to unplug it you're gonna need to do that first and then um you just put that aside and you're going to also take off uh, the bottom piece, the bottom plate, and then you'll just put in the new hat plate. Okay, now that I have the hat press on, I have this image here and you can see that I did mirror it and I will put it on the front of this hat. Now, I told you in the beginning that I am showing you everything I did for the first time I because I wanted to show you how easy it was for me to figure out and so that you will understand that it's really not a hard thing to do, but I did make a mistake here and I did learn from it. So it will not um, heat the entire image with the way I did it. So what I would have to do is kind of tilt the hat to the side, press it, and then tilt it to the other side and press it. Now if you just have a smaller image, you could just press it one time. So you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second um, after I press this. Um, you can tell too, I'm trying to get it good placement. You really have to like um, make the hat kind of tilt upwards. Now I only had one hat or I would have tried that next method um, that I was just mentioning. But again, I wanted to show you my first tries, how I did this because it, it's not hard at all. And I was very intimidated by this process. And, you know, of course, you're going to make a couple mistakes in the beginning. That's always how it is. So here, as I reveal, you can see that on the far right and left, my image didn't completely go onto that. And that is just because the heat plate was only so long. So again, what I would do is heat it on one side and then heat it on the other. But look at how cute this hat is. You could easily um, make it for any kind of event or just a fun hat that you would like. And here's also a baby blanket that I did just to make a cute wrap to go over my chair for the holiday. I hope you enjoyed learning more about sublimation. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Until next time, happy crafting!